Hello, everyone. Welcome to UI Fivers Live. Once again, we have a great light, a lineup of topics um, to explore. So let's keep the introduction brief this time. Our panel today includes Volker Butzek. Hello. And then also our regulars, Stefan Beck. Hi. Peter Musik. Hi. And Andreas Kunz. Hello. And I, Margot Wolny, will be your guide through this session today. So first, we'll discuss some innovative features in the Easy UI 5 generator. So Volker and Peter have been hard at work during the holiday break to de develop and integrate um, these new aspects. And furthermore, we'll unveil a hidden gem in the UI 5 framework that was recently um, released, but may have gone unnoticed to some. So without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. So Volker, do you want to kick off the discussion with your topic? So um, I'll share my screen and then you should hopefully see this little poor slide here where it says NPM in it VDI5. So this is what um, all of you know for bootstrapping VDI5 into an existing um, UI5 project. If you do not know it, um, if you have a regular TypeScript app in here, for example, if we look at the web app folder, you'll recognize all the properties. There's the component TS and so on and so forth. So nothing out of the ordinary. And what you would do um, usually here to add VDI5 to it is um, enable TypeScript uh, support to VDI5 like this. And then um, the npm init command pulls the create VDI5 package and bootstraps everything with uh, sensitive defaults. After this is done, if you look at the web app folder once again, in here you'll see the end to end test folder. And there's also uh, with a sample test in there with um, a WDIO config in there. And there's also a command added uh, npm run VDI5 to the package JSON of that app. So nothing out of the ordinary. This is as is. So what we've been doing, and by me, I'm referring to Peter and me, um, we add or we created a generator UI5 VDI5. It's this guy here in the UI5 community. It uh, lives under the same name. So the repo name is the same. Why is it named like this? Generator minus UI5 minus VDI5. So generator minus is a Yeoman prefix that is just uh, to be used by Yeoman. Generator minus UI5 denotes that this generator can be run by easy UI5 and VDI5 finally is the subject matter. So you could use um, the VDI5 generator standalone and then achieve the same thing. So let me just do this. I'm calling your easy UI5 VDI5. You see the well-known easy UI5 launch screen. And then after that, the output will look similar to when you use NPM in a VDI5. If you look at the directory now, it's kind of a little convoluted because I haven't created a dedicated directory. So this guy we've seen earlier, and these guys have now been um, put into existence by the easy UI5 wrapper or the VDI5 wrapper around the npm init VDI5 command. So if you look at web up in here, um, there's the sample test and uh, a sample WDIO conf file. Yeah, one thing Volker, which is also maybe mentioning or worth to mention is um, when you use the npm init command, you need to specify minus minus ts um, to indicate that this is a TypeScript project. For the ECUI5 generator variant at the moment, we also extended a detection that if a ts config file is inside, then it automatically knows that it should get generated ts um, files rather than of the JavaScript ones. Exactly. This is a good um, good bridge to this slide here. So you can see now the wrapping of both the VDI5 generator and the NPM in the VDI5 with the help of EasyUI5. So from now on, if you call, or, or we can look at it a second longer, if you now call your EasyUI5 app or your EasyUI5 TS app, which in turn utilize the UI5 app generator or the TypeScript app generator, then under the hood, both generators will also include 
the generator UI5 VDI5, meaning give you VDI5 um, bootstrapped out of the box with creation of the app. And um, I think we should just do this. So oh, let me clear here the screen so you can see everything from scratch, TSF. So easy UI5 pulls the current version of the TypeScript generator, then it asks me for the namespace, it asks me what framework to use, which UI5 version, who is the author, create a new directory for the application. No, I do not wanna initialize a Git repository at this time. And then the TSF generator runs. And after that guy is completed, and forwards all the settings you just chose to the VDI5 generator and will then run this generator as well. And this is the point in time um, that Peter was already talking. To be precise, it's not forwarding all these properties to the next generator, only the destination route, which is the root directory where it's currently working in. The other thing we have to discuss whether this is necessary. Yeah, true, true. So it forwards the um, destination route to the VDI5 generator. And then as you can already see here in the output, it also um, creates the um, VDI5 bootstrap inside this folder. So if we look at um, the directory structure right now, there's this folder that corresponds to my namespace that I just chose. If I go in there and open VS code and then do npm run start for starting the UI5 app, it'll look as expected. So that's the bootstrap um, TypeScript app, UI5 TypeScript app. And if I then, in the same directory run npm run vdi5 the vdi5 end-to-end -end tests will run out of the box so i would not call this true innovation but true convenience <laughs> meaning um, you get vdi5 from now on bootstrapped with the most current version of the typescript generator and because i have the screen right now um, let me mention two more things um, there's also the project generator and just recently people were wondering what's the difference. So the app and the TS app generators are pretty bare bone. They contain the gist of the apps, nothing much more, but also nothing less. The project generator is way bigger. It also um, contains the deploy time. So to um, the ABAP stack, to BTP and so on and so forth. And um, contains a lot of sub-generators in itself. And of course, the plan is, as you can see, denoted by that little gray arrow, to also plug in that sub-generator into the regular project generator. So everyone using that one will also get VDI5 bootstrap. And this is a little shout out to Nico Schönthal, the developer advocate. He's just about to think up a new and improved way of doing the project generator and we'll put and help uh, or we'll um, assist him in that in uh, regards or with regards to including the VDI5 generator also in this little rewrite. And uh, on a final note, would it not be cool if the uh, open UX tools, so the people that run the, or create the generators in Business Application Studio were to reuse the bare bones app and TS app generators because that would mean that you guys out there using bus would also get the freshly bootstrap VDI5 into these app, apps into your bus bootstrap application. Yeah, finally, it became a nice presentation, Volker, so I can maybe uh, take over now and explain a little bit the technical background behind that, how that works, if you also are interested in the technical details on that. What has happened more or less is um, that we extended the easy UI5 generator um, in that way that you can specify nested generators in um, your generator. Therefore, I have um, opened the generator UI5 app as an example. And when you look into the generator UI5 app, and here the definition of this generator is inside, it has a static property, this nested generators, which is an array, so it can be more than just one as the generator which is running there behind the scenes and here we specify just the names um, like we would do so for the ecui 5 so yo ecui 5 vdi5 triggers the vdi5 generator 
And by just putting this now inside of the app generator, you automatically connect these generators with each other. And the benefit why it's so essential to have these nested generators is not the execution purely. Um, more interesting behind the execution is really that the installation um, happens. So if I run, for example, here the ECUL5 generator for the app, I hope you, we can see that also when doing so. Yeah, maybe what I do before I started, um, as I were here, I can, for example, also delete now um, or rename the generator with the i5, and it will be downloaded again. ECUI5 app. So let's run that. And um, as you have seen at Volker's uh, side, so it's starting it, it's installing typically and checking for the being up to date, the app generator. And now with having these nested generators property inside, it also checks all these nested generators. And after the installation of this UI5 app, it now checks for the VDI5. And we should see that in the second downloading and preparing VDI5. And with that, you have already locally, again, the setup. So we can see this is the cache. So it's near NPM homes directory. There is a, um, a directory underscore generator ECUI5 inside. So that's the place where you find all your locally installed generators. And here now you can see the generator UI5 VDI5 is being installed next to the others here. And then the regular uh, process that's uh, more or less starts here to, to run um, the the generator and the nested ones then behind the scenes. And as Volker um, yeah, mentioned, there is a handshake between the generators. At the moment, we don't pass uh, all these options which are configured here, but there is one thing. So in the case of the app generator, it asks to create a new directory. So this app uh, name here, what we have specified, the application ID, this will be the, the name of the new directory. and. Um, then this information needs to be passed to all follow-up generators because they should run them in this directory, which has been created here. And this is one thing which also happens behind the scenes in the ECUI5 generator, that it listens the execution of these uh, generators and after each execution, it grabs the destination route and passes this destination route information to the next generator. And what's worth mentioning here is probably something you can already see on Peter's screen. There is an easy UI 53.8.0 release. So this is the release that um, is capable of running nested generators, not the 3.7.0. Yeah, that would be my final comment. So update your easy UI 5 generator. All the plugin generators which are installed locally will be updated automatically as you know that. So they have their own, own mechanism. So ECUI5 uh, checks for the commit SHA. And if this differs from the latest version, it installs and updates them automatically. But yeah, the most important thing is go and say npm install minus g and generator ECUI5, as you most probably know. And then um, you get the latest version. You can play around with the app and the TS app, you get VDI uh, 5 support and automatically add it to that. And if you have at some point of time problems with a nested generator, then there is the option minus skip, gen, uh, skip nested. And with that, you can only run the, yeah, this own, the single plugin generator for the application it, and not um, all the nested um, generators behind the scenes. So in case of uh, you face some issues. So, but I think basically that's all, all Volker. Pretty much it might be worth mentioning that the easy UI5 generator. So what you just showed NPM install uh, globally, the easy UI5 generator is the only NPM package that you need to install. All the other generators you do not need to install locally. They will be pulled down on the fly by easy UI5. Yeah, that's this directory and your .npm folder in the home and your user home most probably and then in underscore generator ECUI5 you find plugin generators and then all these local generators. So even if you update ECUI5 they will be kept and be available locally. A question that some people might have is if those nested generators also have options 
how do they appear here in this flow? Would they just be opened later on, or does it? Yeah. So this is ex this will happen exactly like that. So in Volker's case with VDI five, there is uh, no um, nested generator executed. But maybe what I can do now um, on a, an example here, let's use for example the library generator, library app. So here. Um, we have uh, organized our generators namespaces in VDI 5 generator. It's a default generator, so you don't need to specify this local uh, subfolder for that. Um, so, but um, in details, I will also maybe explain that on the ECUI 5 side a little bit more in, in, in words um, to, to those who want to play around with that. But that's the way how you address that. And now, if I run the app generator, let's do that. Let's skip nested, let's let it run. Then you will see that it first asks for the first generator, then the second generator questions will come above. You see also generator UI 5 library is being um, installed and updated. So it takes care that everything is okay. So let's go quickly through that here. To add a new directory, no git. So first it runs this one generator as an atomic unit. It uses nth run in, in for those who know what Yeoman does behind the scenes uh, um, to execute this one generator individually. And then after the execution of this generator, it triggers the execution of the next generator. And to more completely answer the question, probably um, we have not decided on a way how to forward command line options to the sub generators yet what Peter already explained. So if a sub-generator is capable of recognizing certain command line switches, this will or currently is not possible via that nested generator approach. Another question would be when you have like lots of sub-generators adding certain features to an existing um, to an existing application, then could those nested generators be turned on and off, so to say, within the questions of the main generator? Would also be interesting. So, of course, everyone wants VDI five included. But maybe if there are different deployment options, um, then you maybe only want one of them. So maybe you want to control which sub generators. Um, are... Definitely something we can also think of to extend it. So that's great ideas. Um, yeah, would be worth to look into that. Uh, at the moment, it's very primitive, the integration, but um, helpful for that what we have. But I also thought about these approaches, um, and, uh, but it's more or less it means effort. And if you are interested in that, also yeah, feel invited in, in the Easy UI 5 generator and also contribute one or the other stuff here. I'm, I'm quite happy if someone joins. <laughs> yeah, but now you see basically here on, at the bottom, here you get now the question of the library generator. And... Um, if I complete that now, it's, you see it's uh, put into the um, app folder and then to the lib folder here inside. And that's um, basically how it's uh, how it's doing it. So it's, it knows about all these uh, structures here. Good. Um, second topic. Um, Margaret mentioned already there is an unveiled feature in uh, UI 5 inside um, and um, some of you have uh, may remember the UI 5 con last year where I was at stage together with Wouter explaining how to use UI 5 web components inside um, of um, um, uh, or as a library inside an application of UI 5 to benefit from um, the uh, life cycle uh, of the UI 5 um, framework like data binding, like rendering and so on. And behind the scenes, there was a base class we didn't have visible at that point of time, this SAP UI core web C web component, which has been moved now into the core library of UI 5. And with that, um, one uh, thing I promised that um, web components will become first class citizens of the framework. Um, this um, is now um, possible with that. So this means with a web component base class, you can also integrate arbitrary web components into the lifecycle of UI5 applications. And what I want to do today with you in the UI5 as live is to showcase how you can embed easily um, a web component as a via control wrapper than using this web components base class in UI5 and explain the capabilities of that. 
So basically, when I started to investigate what 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 could I do, I looked at Web Components Org for the list of web components here inside, and then I found some interesting library, um, another web components library, which uh, besides UI5 web components, um, this is the Spectrum web components library for Adobe. And um, what I want to do is to integrate now this banner component into UI5 because this banner component has some interesting aspects. It has some slots, um, which is a bit like the aggregations of UI5 controls. And that's um, the thing I want to now make possible in UI5 to put this into a control and then let it render uh, by the UI5 framework via the control wrapper. So let's get started. What do you need to do for that? So the first thing is to start, you can do it in an application. Now I want to make a reuse library. So I start with a library. Uh, first, and as they are called Spectrum Web Components, um, we use the library name SWC lib. So let's see. Um, sometimes the yeoman is a bit sleepy. Maybe it's because I have so many stuff installed locally. And it scans all that behind the scenes the first time, the second execution would be much faster. So swc.lib. So this is my library, open UI5, um, the latest version. This is a new question also, by the way, in these generators that the source and test folder will be uh, omitting the namespace, will be flat. Now I show that because I use that. This avoids that to have a repeated namespace in source and test, and uh, you can also then uh, maintain all uh, the resources flat in the library. Um, I want to create a new directory, yes, no git, and oh yeah, it, I prepared that already up front because I wanted to at least in the generation save a little bit of time. So this is now my uh, new library I, I created, and um, what I want to do is I want to consume this Adobe um, web component and it explains to me that I should import it like that. And you remember from the past, that I explained how you can integrate then also um, these uh, third party components or NPM packages into UI5. You need to have the UI5 tooling modules, uh, middleware and task uh, used in your project. So first of all, I install now this Spectrum web component as a dependency to my project. Um, this is now um, yeah, the Adobe component and I install as a dev dependency, the UI5 tooling modules. Um, into my project because this I need to use at least for the development now um, as a middleware uh, to be able to serve the resources from there. So to do so in the UI5 YAML, I need to add um, a dependency. So the UI5 tooling modules middleware. And it's configuration tree, just drop it in like that. That's it. So now when using npm start, I should be able to, um, yeah, to serve that resource. But now we also need to create a control wrapper uh, for that. So that's the, the sample, the example control. We use this test page later on to also put the banner inside. So first of all, I will copy now um, this example and re rename it to banner.js. And I throw all the things out I don't need. So here um, we only refer to the library. And we need now the base class, SAP UI 4 WebC um, web component. This is my base class. And I don't need a renderer because the web component is now using a, a, a generic renderer behind the scenes, um, which you don't need to take care of. It renders um, the stuff well, more or less. So I need to minimize this here a little bit. Um, behind the scenes. So let's take a look into that. This one we don't need. We, for the moment, skip also the JS doc part and say var banner. Banner is my web component extent. And now I need to specify the name SWC lib banner. So this I remove for to be a bit more precise. And now the metadata. Um, of that, uh, I remove too much here, this one, 
And now the metadata of that, this gets some extensions. And um, I want to talk now a little bit about these extensions, but before I do so, I clean a little bit more um, of that. And we just remove all that. The renderer, we are using API version four and a render function with a render manager and the control inside. And oh no, we don't need that. That's that's something else. So I come to that later. Um, no, but this one we don't need. And then we return the banner. So first, let's take a look into the metadata. Um, in the documentation of UI5 web components, um, or not UI5, of um, SAP UI5, we have this web components um, wrapper. And this web components wrapper, um, it has some metadata options in addition. So, and this I want to explain and also make some demos uh, to you that you can see that a little bit more. So, this metadata options, they come um, with um, some specialities for properties um, because you need to map these properties to different things. And I show that to you in, in a second how this works. And um, yeah, you have. Uh, also aggregations, the aggregations, they are mapping to slots because in web components, all the nested elements you have, they are going into slots. And for us in the UI5 world, all these things are aggregations. And then associations, this is also something um, we don't really, uh, we mainly rarely use also even in UI5. And uh, so I don't wanna explain that now in two details. It's more or less if you have uh, association from a control to a label or something like that, where you want to manifest that somehow. But Let's take a look mainly in properties and aggregations. And now let's continue this banner uh, component. So a metadata um, is also one thing which is specific for a web component that you have to specify the tag. That's important for the generic renderer behind the scenes that he knows what to do. So in this case, we know that from the documentation we have in here, I need to go a little bit down here, that um, this tag for this component is SP banner. So this is what we also maintain here. And then we can see in this um, API documentation, what kind of APIs does it have? It has the type. And um, so we specify as a property the type. The type is in our case a string. You could also do a, um, an enumeration, but um, we just keep it simple for time being and say it's a type string and that's it. And then um, we have this mapping um, information here. And this mapping information, this can be now, um, for example, property, uh, which is the default. And then this means that this uh, property type will map um, to uh, the property type on the web component. It will be set as an attribute while rendering, and we, we will see that in a second. Okay, basically for a very simple thing, that, that would be all for the banner to be done. Um, to be wrapped. Now I, I didn't go deeper into the header and content, but I will do so also quickly. But now let's let's prepare our test page to also see the steps a little bit more iteratively. Um, so I go here and I import the SWC lib um, banner. And then I just place the banner below the other one. Type is info in this case, and then we say place at, and then content again. So at least now we should see that something has been rendered. It's not visible yet. I hope so at least. And here we see now the SP banner has been rendered and I make it a little bit bigger here in this case. This SP banner um, has now this type, and this type is being ad uh, attribute, and this type attribute has been set as the info. It's not rendering yet because there is some speciality with um, these web components. And I read a little bit through the documentations uh, of them. They need a theme um, element around, and this brings the styling. And this theme element, this uh, requires to import a few more stuff. And I also missed for sure in my demo to import the implementation for the banner. That's one thing which is also explained here. So this guy 
this import is now go, needs to go into my banner implementation. And here I need to add that as well. So now with that, at least I should see that the banner is being loaded and um, there should be some shadow root. So the logic runs already now, but it doesn't render anything because there is nothing in the slots so far. <clears throat> And uh, But I explained the theme part, and the theme part is also one thing we need to add. So let's uh, copy this one and make a theme um, here in addition to that. And for the theme, let's take a look quickly. I need two more imports here. And then there is one speciality at the moment we need to know. If we have dependencies to... Um, to resources which share also common other common other modules at the moment. The UI5 tooling modules is not able to bundle that um, by having separate imports. This will be a feature I will also explain in the future how that will work. It's in development currently in my spare time um, because this would simplify also the usage here of uh, the whole thing. But there is a concept in um, the UI5 tooling modules which is called bundle devs. Uh, so these are bundle definitions and the bundle definitions. Um, so I now call it SWC, so S, um, JS. So this is a simple JS file where you can put all the imports of uh, things inside, which are also potentially um, sharing uh, dependencies uh, underneath each other in order to create one single bundle out of them. And that's what I do now. And um, these bundle definitions, they can be imported in the projects um, in a way that you specify the name of your local um, project. So in the package JSON, this is the name you have here. And then you address it swc.lib slash bundle dev slash and then the swc as the name for that. And that's uh, the thing how you get then this dependency being loaded. So slash, um, what did I say, bundle devs? bundle devs slash um, SWC. And by doing so now, um, I should at least uh, hopefully see, ah, I need to import now this additional dependency. So let's do that as well. Yet we this as well as a dependency. Not as bad. So now um, that's also because the theme, uh, that's how Adobe structured their web components library for everything you are consuming from that. You have your own NPM package and you consume them individually. And by doing so now, I'm able to import that here uh, from that. And now when I start, it should work. And we can then finally create um, this uh, the theme uh, control, which wraps the other stuff. So. Okay, I need to continue with the theme. I know that the theme has the SP theme as a tag. Let's speed that a little bit up. So here we have my dot swc dot lib and no my uh, not my swc lib bundle devs. I need to also import this bundle definition here. And then we need to specify the properties uh, for that. So we have the property. Now we need to quickly look into that. So yeah, the, uh, the API is the best to take a look. We have theme, um, color, and scale. So I need to implement that. Theme goes as a property. Color and scale and scale. And now um, we put now an aggregation inside that because there should be children's rendered aggregation. That's, and in that we have the content aggregation. We flag also as a default aggregation. So that's now UI5 classic stuff still. Aggre Question right now about the property names. Can they be mapped from the web component to the controller or vice versa, actually? Um, so what you can do is um, if you have a different name for a property here, for example, caller one, 
Um, you can expand this property and say this is a mapping type property too. And then you can specify the name of the property um, and the web component. So there can be also some kind of aliasing taking place for that in case of you want to rename that for the web components. <clears throat> and the content here, um, this is as a type, we use SAP UI for uh, for web C web components. So we should use the web components here. You can also have a base type for your stuff if you want to have it um, or define the interface and multiple is here in this case true. It's a default aggregation, which would simplify then the usage in the XML views. So and now if I um, do that that way, I need to put it also into my example, the theme, SWC lib lib theme I need to hurry up I talked too long about the ECUI5 so now we have new theme and then in the theme we have the content and in the theme we also have the theme itself this is spectrum by on their side then the color one we used is light and the scale is medium. So there are some, um, you don't need to know that now in detail, but you can look it up also if you're interested on their side. And then in the content, we put now as an aggregation, the button. So, and now I hope, keep fingers crossed. Oh, it didn't work. So this is the SP theme is put around and in the SP theme, I know in setting content, did I make something wrong with the aggregation? Default ag aggregations. So maybe I just switch now to one of the things I prepared because I want to use this nevertheless um, um, at some point in time after getting this to run. Um, I made uh, already up front um, a small example where I implemented the whole thing, but now with TypeScript as well, because I also want to show you that this all works for sure in the TypeScript variant. So here I have the content, I have here the slot, maybe this, um, this was missing because it should assign to the slot content, but still, uh, aggregations, um, yeah, um, strange. Anyhow, content, this looks all good. It looks like I had it. Anyhow, um, here you see how this looks like when it's being ready to implement it from the metadata. You have the properties mappings um, and you have this aggregations mappings. Now, if I start this one here, I implemented besides the, the button and the theme also a bit more stuff. And um, this uh, allows me now to um, put here uh, the things a bit more um, fluid together. So I have the theme and inside of this um, theme where I specify spectrum, um, light, medium, I put my content inside. And um, here I have uh, the banner, which we have seen what I started to, be, uh, to implement with the type and the width and, and so on. And here, interesting also with, in this case, is a property which should go to style. And with the metadata, you have the option now to say mapping um, style. So mapping property means an attribute. Mapping style means it goes in the style, you know, uh, this um, um, yeah, style attribute of, of the web component so that you can also affect this here. And this is what you see here. This is now the banner component with the example component being nested inside, because what I also did is um, in the banner component, there is the aggregation content. So it is also an aggregation content there. We can put any control inside and this will render in the slot content, which is then um, yeah, using this slotting mechanism um, of the web components to render these web components inside. But I see also, we need even more time to explain that completely in depth. 
And it makes sense to write that all down in a blog post so that you can also take some time and read that carefully and play around with that slowly. But basically, that, that that's a UI5 app with a control that is basically internally it's a web component. And inside this web component, there's again a normal normal control. Yeah, exactly. So you can really now with that nest the whole stuff and uh, bring it together. You see also um, this um, provides you a regular API. So you have also the possibility to imperatively use that here in your JavaScript um, environment. And also what um, I wanted to show with that is um, that if you use that in an application, so this is now an application which is using uh, the library, and to use the library, the web components library, the only thing you need to do is to have a dependency to this web components library to that. Then in the manifest, you specify the dependency to the web components library for the UI5 runtime. And in the XML view, finally, you can now use with the XML namespace of the MyWebCLib, um, these custom web components tags we define. So in this case, we have the theme and the button inside. And if I run this application now here, it consumes this button um, from um, this uh, web components library um, as a dependency um, in this in this uh, uh, in this lifecycle chain. In other words, this library that is basically built with web components and wrapping them can be used can be consumed just like any other exactly and you can now release that library even you can build that um, you can release that library it can be pushed to npm it can be consumed from other sites as a regular npm package and here you see this is the the button so i just showed this is the normal ui5 button this is the web components button both use text with formatters and a click event here and the press event handler are using the same uh, event handler so if i click this one i get this pop-up if i click this one i get that pop-up and it's doing exactly the same so you can really uh, now seamlessly embed um, the web components into or an arbitrary web component with that magic into uh, a UI5 application. As I said, the little downside is still in the UI5 tooling modules, this bundle definition. This will soon be solved, but then you can just put the regular dependencies in your individual modules. Um, UI5. Sorry to interrupt you. So there was a question. Basically, you need a verify the bundle devs for shared imports only, and yeah. others can be imported as usual. Exactly, yeah. And, and now, if you finally build that, so I made that also, if you say, for example, in the UI5 YAML, um, include dependency my lib, so this makes this library part of the build um, of your application, then um, in the disk folder, you find also the, the content, the build output of that library. And we see the resources my web lib. And um, in this library, I use this configuration add to namespace. And with that, all these third party bundles, they are packaged now inside. Um, this um, yeah the the namespace of this library and are provided to you as part of the this application's con uh, this library's content and yeah there is not not much to do so here it's also UI five AMD like module it can be regularly loaded and that's also what we are making use of that's the benefit of this UI five tooling modules um, um, approach to include third party modules and um, yeah. There is much more to explain even on that. Um, I, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to go deeper, but um, there are nice aspects as well, maybe as a last thing inside. In case of, um, there is uh, something like uh, the following for a web component that it expects. Let's go to the banner again quickly, and then I stop after that, and the rest I explain in the blog post as well. And maybe also we can at some point of time do a deep dive session on that as well. Then um, this uh, banner, it expects that some properties are provided as diffs inside um, this tag. And normally um, it would require then for UI5, for one of uh, you who have done that already, to create a dummy diff um, uh, component which renders then a diff. That was uh, one thing which I um, uh, tried here quickly, but this looks a little bit ugly and it's um, it's uh, not so nice. So what the web components base class now provides or this metadata options is that you can specify also a mapping with a type slot. 
and then you specify the HTML tag to which you want to put that. So the type string, which is in here, will go then as into a div as an inner text, and then this will be slotted into the header slot so that it's being put inside. And how does that look like? Um, technically, do I still have it open? Um, here we see the hello world. And here, this is how it's rendered, div slot header. The text is inside of that. And then this is put inside as a child inside this SV banner. So you have a lot of convenient functionality with this web component wrapper on top um, to easily um, wrap a web component, an arbitrary web component, put it inside uh, UI5 as a control wrapper, and then benefit from uh, the lifecycle connection to do some data binding and to be part of the rendering cycle to also allow to nest into each other web components and UI5 controls uh, seamlessly without any loose of functionality. So I hope it was not too fast. There was one more question actually in the very beginning of this topic, when the library generator asked you the questions, you said there's the option that you can omit the namespace folder. Yeah, good, good point. Maybe you can answer in one word. Is there any reason to have these namespace folders though? No. Thank you. We just needed it for older versions, uh, but the newer versions of the tooling, I would um, yeah recommend that's also by it's a default that you omit the namespaces. This simplifies a lot. You have no hierarchy Less anymore. Less folder nesting, so it's a bit, bit more convenient. Okay. Also, renaming namespaces is a bit easier than, but still, it repeats in a lot of places. Okay. Yeah, also in this case, um, please feel free to, to play around with that, share feedback on that, and let us know how, how that works. Um, there is also more to come. We have um, yeah, already played around in some of the other cases to wrap even other design systems for UI5 using the framework. So this is um, really an interesting approach to bring in um, assets which are not part of that uh, easily, seamlessly, and to still benefit from UI5 as the framework of your choice. Thanks a lot, Peter. And uh, also thanks a lot, Volker, uh, for your great work during holidays. Um, yeah, so I guess we are at the end, um, over time again. And um, therefore, I say goodbye and hope to see you next month again. Thank you and see you next month. Bye-bye.